please. Mr Everest. How does the panel see the UK in 50 years' time with immigration the way it's coming? 250,000 a year are coming into the UK. It is changing our society. How do you think the UK will look in 50 years' time if immigration stays at around the current level? Melanie Phillips. Well, if it stays around the current level, um, it's going to look uh, very different. But I think it's looking very different now. Um, I mean, I think that um, there was uh, a policy uh, under the previous lab Labour administration to change the makeup of the country um, to become a multicultural society. I think that was an ideological perspective that was put into practice for two reasons. First of all, because it was thought that it was better to be multicultural, that you would kind of break down bigotry and prejudice. And secondly, because it was thought that um, it was economically, uh, it, it made economic sense. And I personally think both of those judgments uh, were unwise um, because no one ever asked the British people if they wanted their national identity to be, to be changed. Um, and they, you can't get something more fundamental than national identity. What worries me about immigration is this, and I speak as the granddaughter and great-granddaughter of immigrants who came to Britain around the turn of the 20th century. Um, so I know better than anybody, really, uh, or better than most people, that the many people that immigrants bring a great deal to a country and should be welcomed. But it has to be in proportion, it has to be uh, sensibly managed. Because if you have uh, the right number of immigrants coming in from cultures which are very different, you can assimilate them and accommodate them perfectly reasonably, and they add a great deal uh, to a society. But if you take in too many too quickly um, from too many cultures which are very different, not uh, apart from anything else, if they don't have English as a first language, you can very quickly overwhelm the public services uh, which can't cope, the health services, doctors, uh, the schools, um, schools can't cope with all the languages uh, being spoken and so on and so forth. And you also make it very difficult for the host society to assimilate them to become British, which I think is terribly important. Okay. Um, because but if you have too many coming in, then you lose the sense of we all share in a national project. And you apply this to immigration from within the... European Union as much as from outside? Well, it's simply a question of numbers. Um, it's, it's simply a question of too many people. I mean, we're, we're, we are a very overcrowded island and our public services quite obviously, I mean, in, 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 obviously in particular areas, some, particular, some areas are particularly in difficulties and others are in less difficulty. Um, but it's quite clear to me that uh, if you take in too, too many people as we have done too quickly, uh, you simply overwhelm public services wherever they come from. You, sir. Can I touch on a point Charles said? Charles, you said about politics offering hope to the people. Mm. You, none of you three parties offer me any hope, and you haven't for years. UKIP represent my views now. <laughs> UKIP represent my views now. And why does David Cameron keep kidding us that he's going to do a deal with the EU on immigration? <clears throat> Merkel's come out and said it. They've all come out and said it. We're not stupid. We're not stupid. It's a new time. That, whether you believe in UKIP or not, I'm so glad and, and I thank God that UKIP have stirred <clears throat> all you parties up because if they hadn't of, I don't know what you'd be doing. You wouldn't be looking us in the face and thinking there's a problem. You're just in your cosy little worlds. Oh. I, 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 